Hello, welcome to Financial Insider Weekly. I'm your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is Lori Graymont. Lori is the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Summit Team, excuse me, Summit Solutions Team Corp. And she has been working in real estate for 20 years. Lori started out helping her mom and dad rehabilitating uh, properties, and she's really good with a drill and a hammer. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> she says that her husband married her because she had better power tools than he did. Anyway, Summit Solutions helps connect investors with opportunities with bulk bank foreclosed properties, and uh, another term that's used for those is REOs. Uh, and so today, Lori and I are going to be talking about investing in REOs, or foreclosed properties. Now this is just an introduction to a complex area that requires a lot of study and due diligence. Uh, but it's also kind of a hot area right now, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to talk to Lori about it. So Lori, let's get started. And first of all, thanks for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. Good. So, why is this a great time to be thinking about investing in bank foreclosed properties, or REOs? Well, as you know, we're in a historic time where there have never been as many foreclosures as we're seeing right now. And the truth of the matter is the banks can't foreclose on them fast enough and get them off their books fast enough. And so they're coming up with ways to send them out the back door, as we call it, on bulk lists. And so we can buy them super cheap. Mm -hmm. Pretty exciting. So, can this be an affordable area of investment, and if so, why? It's absolutely an affordable way to invest. You can get homes in the Midwest and Southeast as cheap as $5,000 a property. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so for those of us who live in California, yeah. we can't even you know, buy a car for 5000 let I alone know. a house. And these homes, you know, they need moderate to severe rehab. But the people who live in these neighborhoods are capable of, of accomplishing that in short order. And so it's an affordable way for them to get into a home too. So the idea to some degree is that, um, as I understand it, that you're turning these properties pretty fast with the idea that you're selling it really uh, without much improvement to somebody that's going to do the work themselves. That's, that's correct. So when we get a, a property, we'll have a minor inspection done just so we know its condition. Mm -hmm. And then we hang up a sign and we sell or finance it. The reason the properties aren't selling is lack of financing right now. And so we offer that financing out to the individuals and we ask for a minimal down payment because we know they have to put sweat equity into the property. Okay. Now, how do banks create these bulk, bulk REO packages? How does it work? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first thing you need to know is you're not getting the cream of the crop properties. Um, when a bank takes a property back, the first thing they do is they list it with a real estate agent. And it sits out there. If it doesn't sell, maybe 180 days, 240 days, then they look at another way to dispose of the property. Meanwhile, it's been sitting vacant. It may be vandalized. Um, things like hot water heater and a furnace are missing. And so it comes out um, that it's kind of a damaged property, mm -hmm. and it becomes a liability for the bank. So they just kind of go through their inventory and create this little list of what they want to push out the back door, and, and that's how we get the bulk list. Okay. Now, should you have experience with other real estate investments before you try investing in these types of packages? I would say absolutely. If you have never had a rental property, you don't understand what you're going to be encountering with the people or the property. So you should have real estate experience before you jump into this. This is kind of a an expert area to be in if you have been in real estate for a while, but it's not for the beginner. Okay. Now, how does your company help investors who's getting started investing in REOs? Sure. What we did is we started by buying the bulk REOs to make sure that we could actually sell them. And we developed a system that we can share with other people who want to buy bulk REOs and they're not sure how to navigate the waters. So we teach people how to do it and we also can sell them the properties. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So 
let's get in a little bit of the details. What kind of properties are really in these packages? <laughs> <laughs> well, I always tell people, have you watched the movie Grand Torino? Have you seen the movie? It's, a, it's stationed in Detroit, and you're going to see a lot of houses that are half standing there. You're going to see houses that are burnt out. You're going to see um, houses in the inner city, the rural areas. They're not necessarily pretty houses, and the thing that we have to realize is people still live in these neighborhoods and the financing for them to own is gone. And so we're solving a problem where we're providing financing for people who live in, in the areas. Okay. We've been talking a lot about financing. I've been hearing some rumors about, and I'm sorry this isn't on the list of questions, so if, if you want to bypass it, it's okay. But I've been hearing rumors that they're, they're thinking in Congress of trying to restrict self seller financing. That would be devastating if they restrict that because it's taking away a freedom that people have to decide who they want to sell their house to. But yes, there is a discussion about making it where you have to be registered as a broker in order to do it. And if that's what it comes out to, then we'll just follow the regulations and we'll do it that way. Yeah, but there are so many people that want to sell their own properties and so forth and they're not brokers or, and they may just be investors. Yes. Um, and you know, there, there's just so many considerations around becoming a broker, or even the possibility, again, of maybe even not being able to get capital gains on your properties and things. I mean, <laughs> like I said, it would be devastating because over 60% of the inventory in the nation is owned by an investor or by a person as their second home. And right now, the problem with uh, the value is dropping is people can't sell their properties so the only option they might have to sell it with financing is available to them if they finance it themselves because the banks aren't financing because the values aren't there so it's like this compounding thing if they enact that it's just going to cause more problems in the real estate market so folks write your congressman or talk to your congressman uh, especially if you have some interest in this and what it boils down to, it, this is something that's important even for the, the less fortunate, maybe even more important to them than the more fortunate because yeah. this may be the only way they can qualify to get financing to own a home. That's correct. Many people will start with seller financing or seller carrybacks is what they're sometimes called as their first step into financing because they've had things happen. Life happens to people mm -hmm. and so they have bad credit and other opportunities where things have hit their credit and now they can't own and this is their first step to rebuild that and so it really is a nation, um, I call it a right, we should have the right to be able to get it and to offer it. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are the minimum cash requirements for somebody who wants to invest in this area? <clears throat> the bulk REO business is, has a lot of opportunity but it also has a lot of risk. And so one of the things that's really important is that you have enough capital to get you through some of the potholes or pitfalls that you might run into. So we tell people that they should have at least 100,000, 150,000 would be better to make their first purchase. And if they had 150, we'd only buy 100,000 and we keep the 50 set aside for reserve. It's just good business practice. Uh -huh. So those little unexpected things that might come up and you don't want to be stuck. Uh, without having the cash to pay those bills. That's correct. And there's a lot of unexpected things because the banks don't take care of the issues. You know, they don't go mow the lawns after a while. Um, there's code compliance issues. There's liens against the property. The person who was foreclosed upon might have left a water lien there. And so you don't necessarily know all those things, but yet you will have to cure them if you're going to try to sell the property. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I sort of asked this question, how do you deal with properties located outside California? Obviously, most of the properties that we're talking about probably are outside California. Most